Okay, so how many people are here because they love hockey? <laughs> how many people are here because they're interested in web scraping? How many people are here because they wanted to know how I'm related to Joel? <laughs> Hopefully, all of your interests will be answered uh, in this talk. So this was an exercise that I undertook um, because I was interested in learning a little bit more about web scraping. Um, so I think when you're starting off with any sort of project like that, it's important to pick a topic that you have a lot of interest in, because that usually helps you um, make it all the way through. Um, I happen to be a big hockey fan, um, so I decided um, I was going to look at hockey data. Uh, and specifically, I was going to look at hockey penalty data. If you're not uh, familiar with hockey penalties, uh, they're kind of like penalties in um, in football, there, when you break the rules and you get caught, uh, the big difference is that instead of being penalized in yards, you're being penalized in that you have to go sit off the ice and your team has to play with one less person. Um, so uh, uh, here I'm going to say, uh, look at how do penalties affect the outcome of the game. Uh, one of the most famous types of penalties in hockey um, is the... Uh, Fighting penalty. Uh, these, this is actually a Seattle Thunderbirds hockey game. They're, they're a junior hockey team here, which is unfortunately all we can get right now. Um, but uh, if you go to junior games, which are still really fun, uh, that's like something you might see. Um, so uh, Alice. Uh, said a lot of this already. Um, I am Joel's sister, so if that's all you're interested in, uh, you don't have to stay for the rest of the talk. Um, but most importantly, um, which was not part of my introduction, is that I am a big Philadelphia Flyers fan. Um, so uh, I watch a lot of hockey, and I read a lot about hockey. Um, and um, so I'm interested in, in different aspects of hockey, and uh, one, one of the most fun parts is definitely the penalties. Uh, some Hockey 101, in case you don't know anything about the game, uh, there's a rink, there's five skaters per side, uh, so, and plus a goalie. Um, so regular play is five on five, but when a player gets a penalty, so they break the rules, they have to go sit in the penalty box. Uh, they either sit in the penalty box for about two minutes or they sit in the penalty box for five minutes. And so for that whole time, um, usually uh, their team is playing down a player. So you would think that that would um, definitely have a negative impact on their team's performance in the game. Um, there's a wide variety of, of players in hockey. Uh, there's the real skilled guys who uh, score all the goals, make all the fancy moves, and then they go all the way down to the enforcers. And those are the guys who are going to get in fights, um, try to mess with the other team's head. Um, and so, so it, there also could be a factor of who's getting the penalty, you know, and, and uh, it, in, as far as what outcome it might have. Uh, so obviously, hockey penalties put your team at a disadvantage. Um, you're playing with fewer players. Um, but can they ever help you win the game? Um, hockey fights, which I'm not going to talk about as much, um, they have a, a big entertainment value in the game. Everyone loves hockey fights. You know, if you've seen Slapshot, um, if you've seen the movie Goon, you know, it's all about fighting. Um, but, uh, but those, aren't the other, those aren't the only kinds of penalties. Um, so I was inspired for this particular talk um, by uh, Zach Ronaldo, who is the enforcer type on the Philadelphia Flyers. So last January, the Flyers were playing the Penguins. And uh, Zach Ronaldo slams one of the Penguins players uh, into the boards. Um, We'll see if it will load. So it happens right at the top right corner right now. And then they replay it. They'll replay it again in slow motion. Um, so that is a particularly dirty type of penalty um, called boarding, where you're slamming a guy into the boards when he has no idea you're coming at him, so he can't make any defensive moves um, to keep himself from being injured. 
Um, Zach Granado has a, uh, has a reputation for doing these sorts of things. Um, <coughs> and he got, he got a penalty and he got ejected from the game. So he was no longer in the game. But could he still have had an effect on the game? Um, after the game in his media interview, um, he said, yeah, I changed the whole game, man. Who knows what would have happened, what would have, what would the game have been like if I didn't do that? The league <coughs> did not agree with him and they suspended him eight games. Uh, so I uh, approached uh, Zach Ronaldo's question that he posed to me um, as to look at penalty penalty data and seeing if it has a positive effect on the outcome of the game for the team who gets the penalty. Um, so these were the sort of main steps that I, I went through to, um, to do my uh, project. Uh, first, I had to design the experiment. Uh, then I needed to scrape and parse data. I needed to clean and combine data. And then I needed to uh, analyze all that data together. Um, so to design the experiment, I was using my brain. This is my own personal brain. It's not a module in Python called brain. Um, and then to scrape and parse the data, um, I used requests. I uh, initially set out to use beautiful soup. I'll get at why that did not work. Um, and then I also used re regular expressions and HTML parser. Um, and then for the analysis, I used pandas and stats models. Uh, so uh, first, what is the question that you want to answer when you're designing your experiment? Um, I was interested in how do hockey penalties affect the outcome of the game? Okay, that's a good question. So what data will I need? Oh, uh, I'm going to need some penalty data, some game data, some player data. Uh, what data is available? Oh, there's hockey game player data available and tons of sports websites. So I just have to figure out which ones work best for me. Uh, then is there some uh, specific types of data I was interested in for the penalty, you know, which team, what player, what type of penalty is it, um, the game information, so who's playing, what's the state of the game when the penalty happens, you know, is the team that's taking the penalty, are they uh, down, are they ahead, are they tied? And then a little bit about player information of what type of player got the penalty. Like I said, that there's, there's quite a range between a real skilled guy who is valued on the ice versus the enforcer guy who just likes to get in fights. Um, so uh, when I went about getting some uh, game data, um, I thought that there was two questions I should answer about um, where I should pick it from. Uh, one is how easy is it to automate from uh, moving from page to page? And then the second is how easy is it to get the information I want out of the source code? So for the uh, for the play-by-play -play game data, um, I got that from NHL.com. Um, they have this uh, string that's constant for all their games, followed by a season indicator followed by uh, another constant PL stands for play-by-play um, -play data, and O2 indicates regular season. And then uh, there's a four-digit code that uh, corresponds to the game in the season. So there's uh, 1,230 games in the season, so each one uh, gets a number. Um, I, I got 10, uh, 10 seasons worth of NHL uh, regular season games. Um, over the course of these 10 years, there is a switch in how uh, NHL.com was presenting their play-by-play -play data. Uh, so for the first five years, um, it's this uh, part on the uh, left, and um, it basically just looks like a text block in, um, in, in, in a website. On the, on the right are the later seasons, and um, it's a little bit more complicated. There's obviously some tables embedded in there. Um, but I can get the same information from both, uh, from both formats. You know, I'm looking at what was the time of the penalty, what was the penalty, uh, who got it, and uh, what was the score when it happened. So uh, the, the earlier seasons that looked like a block of text in the HTML, they actually were a block of text in the HTML. Um, so basically, uh, it's just parsing a text file 
um, to get the information out of there. Uh, and then for the, for the later seasons, again, it was um, some embedded tables um, in this HTML file. Uh, so to get all the games, I can just loop through all the seasons and then loop through all the games and then I have all the content for 10 seasons worth of NHL games. It was pretty simple. Uh, one thing to think about is what should, what should we do with the results? Should we uh, parse it on the fly or should we download it and store it um, for performance and just so that you can test your code multiple times um, or tweak your code? Um, it makes sense to uh, download it and store it. Um, from a practical, personal perspective, uh, we are Philadelphia Flyers fans, so we watch all of our games on NHL.com. And um, I was downloading, you know, 12,000 um, 12, games from NHL.com. I wanted to sort of make it as, as unlikely as possible that they might block our IP address because I would get in a lot of trouble if we couldn't watch our hockey games at home. <laughs> Um, so, uh, to, to get the penalties, uh, they made it really easy for me. It just says uh, penalty in the, in the line uh, right up here. So I just needed to extract all the lines that said penalty and then strip out the information that I was interested in. Uh, for goals, again, it says goal in it, so that makes it really easy to identify the line that I'm interested in and figure out um, figure out uh, or, and extract out the, the information I need. Uh, for goals, it was a little bit more difficult because there are also some lines that said goalie, and I didn't want those lines. I just wanted the ones that said goal. Uh, for the, for the uh, later seasons, I, I tried to use Beautiful Soup, um, especially in the, in the early parts of these uh, of this format, um, whoever was making these play-by-plays um, was not a super HTML star. And um, the, the sites are terribly formatted and Beautiful Soup would not recognize them as, um, as HTML. I tried a few different uh, HTML parsers in Beautiful Soup and uh, it, it, it was not finding anything for me. Um, I did identify a little bit of the source of that problem was that uh, a lot of this, a lot of the games in, in the first few seasons of this format um, were uh, coded with the character set UTF-16, um, which Beautiful Soup will not read at all. Um, so once I changed it to, to UTF-8, uh, UTF at least it would read them, but it still couldn't parse them. Um, and then, so here, it was a little bit more complicated for these files, and they are a lot bigger um, because of, uh, they're, they're more complicated. So here I had to look for a line that said um, P-E-N-L, um, and then get the information that I wanted from the lines above it and below it, which made it a little bit more complicated. Um, is okay. And then again, uh, same for goals. Um, the goal, the line that says goal doesn't actually have any of the information I'm interested in it. Um, so I had to figure out a pattern uh, where the information about the goal really was. And that uh, consisted of lines that had uh, the word FT period, indicating how far away the shot was made from, and then a parentheses, which indicated uh, that somebody had just scored a goal and was getting a one or a two for that game. And so for every um, penalty, uh, regardless if it was from the early format or the later format, I recorded the team, the player, the period, the time, the power play length, <clears throat> the score at the time of the game, the regulation score, the final score, the season, and the game. So I had all the same information. Um, I also wanted to get some player data because uh, I wanted to be able to account for, you know, is this the real skill guy or is this the enforcer guy? Um, I got this information from ESPN.com. Um, they, uh, they have an indicator for uh, the season again, and then you can just iterate through their pages in intervals of 40. 
Uh, so that's what I did there. Um, their, uh, their data is, it looks like a, a, a garbled mess, but um, it's actually highly structured. Uh, so if I had um, still been wanting to use Beautiful Soup at this point, I probably could have gotten the information from here. Um, but, uh, to, to get all the, the seasons of stats, uh, again, loop through the seasons, loop through the, the counts in uh, intervals of 40, and then um, just keep adding that on to the, to the same file. Um, so this is what like the table looks like. Um, you can see it's very well structured and there's the same information for every player. So that kind of makes me think, um, maybe a regular expression would be, would be good for this uh, to get, extract out the information. Uh, so I, I made this regular expression um, and then uh, it looks a lot more complicated than it is, but I basically just copied out a whole unit that I knew I wanted to repeat for everybody and changed all the variable parts. Um, there were some, some interesting finds, like um, if you're a wing, you had RW, but if you're a center, you had just C, but I didn't realize that there was this space afterwards that was really important. Um, so first I was only getting stats for for wingers, and I was like, what's going on? And then I realized there was this extra space uh, down there. And then I can use HTML parser to extract out all the text from, from the regular expressions. Um, using two different data sources um, led to, to some confusions <coughs> when I went to combine the data. Uh, so NHL gave the, the players by uh, their number, their last name, and their team. And then the ESPN stats gave their players by first name, last name, and all the teams that they played for during the season. Uh, this is, so it wouldn't be a problem to match them all up if there was only one guy on the team with, the, with that last name. But uh, this is the famous computer science brother problem um, where uh, there's, there's a lot of sets of, of brothers or, or not actual brothers, but just people with the same last name, uh, who were on the same team. Uh, and so I had to come up with a strategy to make sure I was matching up the right stats uh, with the right guy, given that I had two completely different uh, sets of data. Uh, teams, teams can change names. Um, so like the Anaheim Ducks, they used to be called the Mighty Ducks of Anaheim, and then they became the Anaheim Ducks. Uh, the Arizona Coyotes used to be called the Winnipeg Jets, and before that, they were Phoenix Coyotes, and now they're the Arizona Coyotes. Uh, so we have to be able to take into account that, um, that the team names might not always be the same, um, and, uh, but we want the code to work for, for all the teams and all the seasons. Uh, and then the, the penalty data, um, was interesting, uh, it was kind of interesting to look at the evolution of what they called penalties over the course of these 10 years. So there was like um, board checking and then boarding and then high stick and high sticking. Um, so there were, in the data set, there were 118 distinct names of penalties, um, but many of these corresponded to the same exact penalty. Uh, so I standardized the names of these penalties and categorized them uh, into six penalty types. So physical foul, uh, that's what I'm calling uh, one of these dirty penalties where uh, you're, you're out to injure someone. So like kneeing, boarding, um, headbutting, uh, something like that. Uh, <coughs> some of these other uh, penalty categories are a little bit uh, they can be accidental, or they could be accidental. Um, and, uh, but again, uh, going back to the penalty that was the inspiration for my talk, uh, it was the physical fouls. So that's uh, pretty much what I, what I focus on for the analysis portion of the talk. Um, I measured the outcome in two ways. Uh, so first was I looked for a positive change in the game following the penalty. So that's where the final state of the game is better than the state of the game when the team took the penalty. 
So like if they're tied when the penalty happens, but then they win, or if they're losing and then they tie or win, those would be positive changes. Uh, and then the second one I looked at was uh, next goal, which is the, if the team that gets the penalty also scores the next goal. Uh, so these two different outcomes are kind of, uh, kind of getting at, you know, if there is an effect, is it very localized to around the penalty, or is it systemic to the whole rest of the game? <clears throat> so for outcome one, which again was positive change, I uh, analyzed all individual uh, 119,000 penalties from these 10 regular season games, or these 10 seasons, uh, regular season games. <clears throat> so again, these are the, the types of data that I collected, uh, or that I had for each, um, for each penalty. Um, some information that I didn't talk about when I was talking about extracting from the, the penalty files uh, was home team. So this is an indicator for was the team that got the penalty the home team or not. Uh, the win percentage of the team that took the penalty and the win percentage of their opponents. And then these last two um, are related to the particular player, which is average time on ice per game and average number of penalty minutes per game. <coughs> so this is just sort of a description of these, um, these five types. I didn't include bench because I'm only looking at uh, individual data and bench penalties are like taken by the team. So there's no uh, of those individual stats to include. Um, so again, this is uh, stick infractions, physical fouls, penalty shots, uh, physical altercations or fighting, and then delay of game. Um, these are descriptions um, of, of how they're associated. Uh, we could take out our calculators and, and look at that. Uh, or uh, we can do a logistic regression. So uh, I use logistic regression to build a model that predicts the outcome of the game based on uh, different features that I was looking at. Um, so again, this uh, log ratio of the outcome um, happening, and then uh, I would include different uh, features. And this is based on a, a post on whyhat.com. So I was going to investigate Zach Ronaldo's claim that he made a positive change. Um, so without any other covariates of game or penalty features, um, I looked at physical fouls and found that uh, there is about a 13.8% increase uh, chance of getting a positive uh, change in the game if your penalty, if your team takes a physical foul. And this is, I mean, this is crazy, right? You're out to like, you're out to injure someone and then you get kicked out of the game and then it helps your team. It's, it's very weird. Um, but so then I was like, well, I got to control for all these other factors in the game that I know are going to um, uh, be involved. Um, but even when I control for uh, the team and opponent's strength, um, it's still, you know, 13.5% uh, uh, increase. Um, so we talked a little bit about the player effect. Um, so these are those two stats that I was talking about before of how I measured um, player effect. Uh, the time on ice is on the Y and penalties, in, uh, penalties per game is on the X. Uh, the blue line is the X equals Y line. You can see those four guys who uh, spent more time in the penalty box um, on average than on the ice per game. Um, <laughs> most, so three of the four of those um, were from the, the two earliest seasons, which was before uh, the 2004-2005 lockout when they made a lot of rule changes and penalty minutes started going down. Um, so, and then uh, the other one I like on here is this guy out here. Um, this guy is an enforcer, but this was his first season in the NHL. Um, and he got brought up on a team that already had an enforcer. So he had to 
play a lot of, of minutes because he couldn't be that guy who was just getting into fights, but he's still a gritty, dirty player. Um, so he got a lot of <laughs> penalty minutes. Uh, so that's how he ended up out there. Um, but where do those different players that are, different types of players that I was talking about before fall out on this chart? Um, Lady Bing Trophy is a, is a trophy for uh, good sportsmanship. Uh, so those are guys who um, don't get a lot of penalties. Uh, so you can see in the blue, uh, they're very close to zero penalty minutes per game. Uh, in the red and purple, those are the real skilled guys, either the skilled defensemen or the skilled forwards. Um, and uh, they're on the ice a lot, so they might happen to get some of these accidental penalties more, uh, but they uh, um, but they don't get a lot of penalties. And then down in green, I've highlighted a few of the enforcer types. And uh, these guys don't play a lot, and they also spend a lot of time in the penalty box. Uh, so you could kind of think about, um, would it matter who is getting the penalty? You know, uh, we're always used to the enforcers getting a penalty, so we're kind of over that. So that's not going to affect us. Um, whereas if one of these skilled guys gets it, then, you know, maybe that will really fire up the team if our captain's going out there and getting penalties for us. Um, when I included these two uh, stats into the model, neither of them uh, was, uh, was significant. So neither of them seems to have a significant effect on uh, how physical fouls af affects the outcome of the game. Um, and the, the odds ratio, again, was, was about 13% uh, increased chance of, of having this positive change, um, given that your team has a physical foul. Uh, so the second one I looked at was uh, next goal, and that's uh, there was uh, only 102,000 penalties because not all the penalties had a goal scored after them. Um, but then uh, the the outcome was was really pretty much the same. Um, I still saw this this. Um, a positive, um, positive effect on scoring the next goal after having a physical foul. So, when is it good to be bad? Um, I guess it's good to be bad uh, if you have a physical foul penalty. Um, that's kind of a weird thing to say because you're actually going out and trying to injure somebody. Um, so that, that doesn't seem like it should be it should be good to be bad in that situation. Uh, when you have a similar record to your opponents. So having an opponent with a really good record um, definitely was, um, was bad for both of these positive change outcomes. And, uh, and having a really good record yourself was good. So the team effect clearly, clearly is there. But if you, um, but if you have a, about the same record, then, then that could be balanced out. Uh, when you're the home team, this makes a lot of sense because um, the, the crowd really gets into it. And then, uh, and then uh, when you're down or tied early in the game, uh, so the effects are, are stronger uh, in the first period um, if these penalties happen in the first period versus uh, later in the game. That makes sense. There's, there's less time for you to actually um, come back or, or win the game. So, did Zach Ronaldo change the effect? So, uh, Zach Ronaldo did get a physical foul, so that's plus one for Zach Ronaldo. Uh, the Flyers were much worse than the Penguins at this point in the season, so uh, that's one against Zach Ronaldo. Uh, Philly was the home team, so plus one for Ronaldo. Uh, when you're down or tied early in the game, Philly was actually ahead at the time of this penalty. So, um, so I guess, yes? I, I, I don't know if he particularly changed the game. He's no longer a Philadelphia Flyer, so maybe that's uh, how the Flyers management thought of the whole situation. <laughs> um, yeah. That's it. <laughs> Thank you.